Hi, I'm Natalie Einhorn. I'm the Director of Fine Arts here at Synapse. This is my ninth year teaching at Synapse and my 20th year teaching performing arts in the classroom. A fun fact about me is I have two kids at Synapse, a son in fifth grade, and a daughter in eighth grade. So throughout Synapse, we teach innovation using the innovation model, which is basically a design thinking tool used for creative problem solving, where we ask students to explore, envision, and execute their ideas. Our goals for teaching innovation through the fine arts is to develop creative fluency for every student. We do this through academic and EQ integration, we do sequential skill development from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade, which is why we teach performing arts and visual arts to all students throughout their entire time at Synapse. And at no point are they asked to choose between one or the other. In performing arts in the lower school in level one and level two, we often look at the correlations between computer scientists and choreographers and how they use some of the same skills. And we might do a project using those skills with choreography and computer science. In level three, if they're studying the colonies, then we'll probably be learning some colonial dances. Either way, uh, whatever it is that we decide in one particular year, the more ways we can give students to access the curriculum, the more entry points they have, the stickier that material is going to be and the more easily they're going to be able to use it creatively. Sequential skill development shows up very clearly in how our performing arts program is taught. In level one, students have performing arts six times a week. So in the mornings, we go in, we teach quick 15-minute lessons where they're singing songs, they're playing games, but more importantly, they're learning to match pitch using their singing voice, and they're learning some of the fundamentals of how to read music. They also come into our classroom once a week in the afternoons, and this is where we can do our large creative movement projects. This is where we can play bigger movement games and singing games, and they can start playing instruments and interacting as an ensemble. And then in level two, those morning sings become a little less frequent, but a little longer. And they're singing songs with a little bit more complexity. They're understanding their singing voice. Most kids at our school are matching pitch by the end of level two. And then again, they also come to our classroom once a week for some of the big projects and their big integration work. Then in level three, those morning singing times turn into two official choir rehearsals. A week. Those choirs, that choir happens with the entire level three, which is about 60 kids rehearsing together, learning to read a score. They're holding music. They have a professional accompanist um, and they're singing songs in two, three part harmony um, languages from all over the world. And of course, genre, all different genres of music that they're learning. What this does is it gives them the skills on how to follow a conductor, how to make musical decisions, how to make artistic decisions with what they're going to perform, how to present themselves in a performance. And then it gives them rehearsal technique that they need as they then move into middle school. Then in those fifth and sixth grade years, they form large ensemble bands. But to us, large ensemble is like 15 or 16 kids. Um, and they're studying in an American years, they would do blues and jazz and a world year they do music from Africa and usually Latin America as well and in these bands they are really learning how to rehearse and make those musical decisions they have a lot more choice about what instrument they want to play um, but they all learn all of the parts so they can make an informed choice and then in our seventh and eighth grade we have our advanced ensembles these are small groups of about six to eight kids usually they can choose what genre they want to pursue for that year. And, and in these groups, they have a lot of choice as to their instrument and what music they're playing. And these ensembles are really kind of the, the jewel in our, in our musical crown at Synapse. All of the students perform at least twice a year in our all school concerts. So these are in December and May where every student performs and all of our teachers are at the concert and all of our families are at the concert. So those are two big events in our community that are really moments of celebration for everybody.